we don't have to go off on a big thing on it, but I'm just curious. You are a lieutenant commander, is that correct? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so chicken or egg question. Did Star Trek Discovery name a character after you because you had started exploring astromycology, or was the idea from astromycology inspired by Star Trek? I'm just curious. Actually, I'm very happy to answer that, and I have actually an add-on as well. I was up in my remote island cabin, and CBS arranged a group call, and 12 of the writers from Star Trek Discovery literally said, Paul, we're in the dungeon. We're supposed to write the next Star Trek. We don't have the foggiest thing what to do. Do you have any ideas? And we're asking, wow, my cabin is built in the shape of Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> The rafters are, are gills of mushrooms, right? And it's, it's, it's three hexagons in tribute to bees, and the big hexagon, 36 feet out, and the two 24s are shaped like a, like a starship. So I'm going, you've gotta be kidding, right? And so um, I said, turn on your tape recorders, let me, let me rip. And so I, so I talked about mycelium, the organization of dark matter, computer, internet, neurons, all conform to, the, to this web-like structure, this interlacing networks. And I told them about, I believe that we'll find fungi throughout the universe. And, and I said, you know, I, I gave them this whole wrap, and I said, rather than, you know, going, at, going into hyperdrive and you see all the stars flash by you, if you can tap into the mycelial universe, you can instantaneously jump anywhere in the universe. So this is the advantage because the dark, the, the organization of dark matter, you know, is is this network that permeates throughout the entire universe. And so you know, they go, "Oh my, that's great!" And then I, towards the end, I go, "You know, I always wanted to." I said, "You can have the ideas for free. I don't want an acknowledgement. I don't want anything. I'm a Star Trek fan." And what I love about Star Trek is you set the stage on a model for future generations of tolerance, diversity the prime directive, cooperation, bringing people together. This is a sacred duty that science fiction becomes science fact. You can lead people like myself. With, 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 I was hugely impressionable about the tolerance of diversity, et cetera. And then I blurted out, I always wanted to be the first astromycologist. They go, astromycologist? Astromycologist, we could use this. And then a little bit of the background, then two weeks before it came out, they go, uh, we better call Paul, and they called Paul, and they go, hey, you know, because I signed a contract, signed my life away, you know, they, they could do anything with my name, no money, no compensation, um, and they said, uh, you know, your character, Anthony Rapp, do you, do you mind he's, that he's gay? <laughs> You're asking me now, <laughs> right? <laughs> I said, are you kidding? That's a badge of honor. I have all my gay friends. I can tell them that I, you know, I've come out of the closet, right? So, <laughs> so you know, so then, then to, to finish the story, there's that, the first three episodes showed, and the astromycologist Paul Stamets is a total asshole. <laughs> so my friends call me up on, this is a, so damaging to your career and your reputation. So I call them up going, WTF? <laughs> What's going on? They go, hold on, hold on. So I told them about the mycelial spore drive beneath creating this chamber that you can fuse with the mycelium. So the astromycologist Stamets you know, goes into the mycelial spore drive and then bonds with blue glowing mycelium. Um, and then after that encounter, he comes out a really nice person. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, we have two, two so, so I, I, I came out of the psychedelic closet, Paul came out of a different closet, Julie, any closets you want to come out of? Um, I, I was going to make the Star Trek sound when you said you came out of the closet, but 